we're entering a really interesting time where I think we're going to start using different large language models for different tasks. This has really come about in the last couple of weeks where a lot of people are moving over to Claude Opus because they're finding that they get better responses than ChatGPT for Turbo. Now, obviously, it's going to be a bit of a cat and mouse game. OpenAI will release ChatGPT 4.5, and I'm sure everyone will switch back. But I think it's really important to test out the different models and see the nuances around what is the difference in how they respond for the specific task at hand. And this is a really helpful tool in doing this. It's called ChatHub. It's a Google Chrome plugin. There's a free version and a paid version. And the free version allows you to test between two different models. And if you pay for the paid version, you can actually test all the way um, up to six models simultaneously. We'll, we'll do four today. But what I really like about it is you can connect in two ways. You can connect directly to your OpenAI or Anthropic account. And what that means is it won't charge you anything extra. It'll just be used within your monthly fee. Plus any conversations will be stored in your chat history in that platform. But you can also use the API so you can compare different models. So in this situation, we're going to compare Claude Sonnet directly with Claude Opus through the API. ChatGPT4 directly through the uh, ChatGPT account and Google Gemini. And I've got a innovation prompt. It's from my prompt library on nfps.ai. It's about coming up with 10 creative ideas, but out of the box thinking. I quite like this prompt. So we're going to populate it in there. And the idea or concept I'd like to explore is superhero dogs helping dog rescue shelters. And let's see what they come up with. So you can see every model has been given the same prompt. We've got Opus is actually leading the charge in terms of speed, which is quite interesting. <laughs> Normally it's um, a little bit slow. Uh, Gemini's finished, so that caught up quickly out <laughs> there. Um, but let's start having a look at, at some of the output. So with Opus, we've got a network of underground tunnels connecting or dog shelters. That's not really a dog superhero. Um, we've got a dog operated satellite system. No, again, superhero dogs with the ability to shape shift into irresistibly adorable forms, making them instantly adoptable to any family. I think that's so sad. They're already irresistible. Uh, all right, we've got a time traveling dog squad that can go back in time to prevent dogs from being abandoned or mistreated in the first place. Okay, I think that's a bit better. But yeah, Opus, I think you let us down. Let's look at Gemini. We've got the Canine Crusaders of Cuteness, a team of irresistibly adorable puppies with mind control cuddles. They overwhelm potential adopters with overwhelming adorableness, making them instantly fall in love and take a new furry friend home. I quite like that. Uh, the Interstellar Tailwaggers, a team of spacefaring pugs with jetpacks and personalized spacesuits. They travel the universe rescuing abandoned dog-like aliens on distant planets, promoting interspecies adoption. Very cool. All right, let's check out Claude Sonnet. We've got the Psychic Poodles, a group of poodles with telepathic abilities, able to communicate with shelter staff and locate the perfect forever homes for each dog. That's cool. And we've got the Healing Huskies, a team of huskies with the power to heal any injuries or illness, ensuring that all shelter dogs are in perfect health for their new families. So I think that's really nice as well. Last stop, we've got ChatGPT4. We've got the Luminous League, a league of superhero dogs with luminescent powers that illuminate the darkest alleys and corners of the world, making invisible strays visible to rescuers. Their light not only guards lost dogs to safety, but also warms their spirits, healing them from the inside out. So I think that's really nice. We've also got a few nine sub, a cyberspace one as well. The paws of creation, bark to the future. <laughs> that's great. So you can see each model gives a different output. And if we now log into our ChatGPT account, refresh it on the left hand side here, we can see uh, we we have that thread. So we've got the innovation prompt at the top. We've got the 10 um, outputs below. If we log into Claude and refresh that, 
And you can see that that thread is also there with the initial prompt and the output. So I think ChatHub is a really useful tool, especially to experiment with prompts and see what the different output is you get from different models and to get a feel, you know, what is the different models that we're going to be using for specific use cases. I'm now developing automations where I've got a combination of different models all within one flow. And I think as we get more and more access to more models, this is potentially just going to continuously increase. You can see already here we've got access to ChatGPT, we've got 3.5 and 4, we've got Claude, which has got three different models, Gemini Pro, Mistral, it's got Bing Copilot, Perplexity, Llama 2, Mistral, Pi, and, and that's just what's available at the moment. As more and more models come about, this is going to continuously grow. But don't get overwhelmed. It's not about finding the, the perfect model for every single situation, but it's more about getting familiar and getting comfortable with understanding the differences between these models. And when you need to use a prompt repeatedly, especially in an automation type setting, I think this is a really good first place to start to just measure that output, see which model you'd like to work with, and then continuously refine the prompt from there. So give it a go. Chat Hub, Google Chrome plugin. As always, if you've got any questions, please feel free to let me know. Otherwise, look forward to seeing you in the next video.